What a deli. Hello, it's George with Watching German Shepherds. In this video, we're going to be going over how to prepare for a new puppy. How to prepare for bringing home a new puppy. And basically, I broke it down into four different areas, okay? So, number one is nutrition, very important. Then number two is containment. Number three would be exercise or play, and those considerations, what you want to have on hand there. And then lastly, hygiene. And so we'll just go over them. Again, that's not a whole lot, but uh, the things that are needed are pretty much critical, the things that we're going to go over in this video. And so with nutrition, uh, two things I say right off the bat. Number one, has to be puppy grade. That means higher fat or protein. And number two, if you're going to change the food that your breeder had the puppy on, uh, get a little bit of the food that the breeder had to uh, just uh, switch the puppy over gradually right so uh, there's a lot of choices and people have their own mind usually when they research it and that's not the intent of this video at all but i would just say to switch over gradually and most people know that so that would be that on the uh nutrition now uh when and what and how those couple of things as well to consider so when uh, I breed German Shepherds, and I would say at eight weeks old, in the morning, give them breakfast, and at night, give them dinner. If you give them lunch, you're going to find, in my experience, that they're just never going to be hungry, hungry, right? So you want them to come hungry, and so you can uh, give them their nutritional needs in two meals, again, breakfast and dinner. So that's the when. The what? That's a much bigger subject, and I intimated a little bit there about that. And just the couple of things I would say is there, again, there's a lot of different manufacturers of dog foods, but basically it comes down to kibble is typically the mainstay, and whether it's grain-free or a kibble that has grain, that's something you're going to have to look into for, for yourself. And then, of course, there is canned stuff. Uh, which some people feed strictly can, some strictly kibble, some mix a little. And then there's human grade. You may want to take eggs. I do that with my puppies at a young age. When I start feeding them, they get raw eggs. And I also give them other human grade foods, such as chicken and beef. And so you can uh, think about that um, as well. And then lastly is the how, right? So the how has to do with the bowl, right? So I just want to say, uh, really, there's two types of bowls. There's ones that are wider on the top and narrower at the bottom. Those bowls, the puppies will easily spill. No doubt about it, because it's narrower on the bottom. Uh, the other type, broader on the bottom and narrower at the top. These bowls will not be so easy for the puppy to spill over. So I certainly recommend the how to feed or water your puppy in a bowl with a wide base and that is enough said there and then lastly i will just say water 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 make sure make sure your puppy and your adult dog always have fresh water then next we come to the consideration of containment okay so containment is of consideration especially in the beginning for housebreaking of course but then even beyond even for the life of the puppy uh, you may want to keep a crate where your puppy has his or her little go-to place even as an adult a quiet place maybe you have a busy home and a puppy or adult dog likes to just go and get away certainly a crate this size would uh, be adequate for the life of any dog, uh, pretty much, uh, maybe a St. Bernard or whatever uh, would need a bigger crate, but this is a pretty big crate here, and this crate actually has a divider where when the puppy is just small, you put a divider, you don't want the puppy to have too much space, they're less apt to soil in there, uh, the less space that they have, they're reluctant to uh, soil in, in that area there, and so, um, also, it's obvious here, but the type of crate, I like the open crate. It's, it's technically a weld wire crate as opposed to, like, if you've seen the plastics, the plastic crates, they have uh, slots in them. 
uh, but the puppy can't see too well out and you can't see too well in. Well, this uh, to me is uh, the way to go. And so as far as the crate, or we also have it for containment, a pen. And these pens are great. You can put them in any room and the puppy can uh, have this crate configured to different uh, shapes, square or as it is now, rectangular. And they're real good. You can even put it outside on the lawn. Um, also, you can see here with that, that, that pen can open up and it can be a little divider. So here in our house, we have the carpeted area and then we have the wood area. We don't want the puppies to go down into that room. And so we put that little divider right across that big opening. Again, it's the same as the little pen there, right? And then uh, what I don't have, but I would mention, is a pet gate, which sometimes people put them at the uh, bottom of their steps, sometimes at the top of their steps, sometimes into a kitchen. And it's just a little gate, and it, it adjusts. It's like a baby gate. Um, and enough said about that, right? I think as far as uh, containment, those things there and I would just mention it doesn't really have to do as much with containment just but just rather moving on to when the puppy gets a little older a bed I really like these elevated gold beds they're very durable I have them out in my kennel they're just great they're good inside outside they're easy to wash as opposed to these fabric beds where my wife has for, for our dog Dahlia in the house and that does come off, the cover comes off, and it's washable, and it's very comfortable, obviously. Um, so you have those two types of choices as far as when the puppy gets a little bigger and the bed that you may choose there. I'll put all the information as far as uh, some of these things on the website, the pens and the beds and, and that stuff. I'll put that in the section below, and you can uh, check that out uh, for yourself there. Uh, next, we're going to move on to the area of exercise or play, right? So very important, and there's a few considerations there. Uh, first thing I would say about that exercise or play is that you make all the difference, right? You can have a ball, a toy, a tug, something that the puppy likes, uh, and it may play for it for a while. I'm sure it would play by itself and, uh, you know, throw the ball and the puppy will play. But you make the difference uh, simply means that, uh, the puppy likes when you play too, right? And so that that's really uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, from there, I would say as far as exercise, obviously you need to control your dog. And there are a few types of collars. And this here of consideration uh, with me for training, I, I really like these pinch collars. Uh, they look uh, worse than they are, let's put it that way. So it gives an even pinch around the scruff of the puppy or dog's neck. This obviously is a an adult dog size. They do have them for puppies. They're very good for training. I highly recommend them for training, even for a puppy. Again, they're not harmful. You have to know how to use it with no matter what the collar or harness, which we're going to talk about that too. Uh, but whatever you use, you don't have a sustained pulling on that, right? It's just a quick correction, a uh, quick reminder, and release. It's not a a, um, a sustained activity so it can't really be dangerous when you're using it correctly so that's the pinch collar then we have the standard everyone knows a uh, choke collar right and I made a video and I simply said uh, you know uh, pinch collar pinches and a choke collar chokes and would you rather be pinched or choked but that being said the choke collar used correctly is also harmless, right? So, uh, which by the way, uh, maybe you know or not, a choke collar goes on a certain way where you pull it and then it releases. If you put it the other way on the dog, depending on which side of you the dog is, but if you put it the other way, then it kind of gets hung up. And so it's designed really to release when it's on the same side, the ring up, so to speak, as the handler. And then there is a strap collar, right? So these are pretty basic. Uh, they have a little D-ring to hook the leash on, and you just latch that together. These, uh, these are probably the weakest uh, as far as the latch there of, of the various collar types, but 
Typically they're good enough, certainly for a puppy, and so that may be a consideration for you. And then lastly on collar pipes is the harness. And these are pretty popular these days. I think, uh, you know, uh, people tend to think of them as being more humane. But again, I would say simply that um, none of them are inhumane when they're used correctly. So, but that being said, if you want to use a harness type restraint on your puppy or dog, then you're, they're available too, and you can certainly get one of those. Now, as far as the leash goes, right, we have uh, a fixed leash, I'll call it, right, where it's a fixed length. This one here is six feet long. And you can get them four foot long and five foot long. You can get them, I think, 10, 12, and even up to 20 feet long, uh, which depending on what you're doing, but they're a fixed length. And so that would be that type of leash. And then for walking a dog, not for training, for walking, for training, I like a fixed length. Uh, but for walking, uh, when a dog's already trained and it's not going to pull, I do like these retractable leashes. This one goes out to 15 feet. And with just a little, a little effort, you can learn how to lock and release this retractable leash. They're great. I really like them. And I, I certainly recommend them. And so the other thing that we want to talk about as far as uh, exercise and play would just be different toys, which, again, it's a vast area there right but just a basic ball make sure they're safe whatever the toys are that's the thing a little a little tug puppies love that and i like a little rope here i have a it was a hundred foot length of rope and i'll cut a two foot length and tie a knot on each end and just drag it around and the puppies and even the big dogs they uh, chase that rope around and you know it's pretty inexpensive another thing that we do but i want you to a bunch of face cloths and we tie them in a knot and the puppies especially they love playing with the little face cloth and you could just throw them out these are about three dollars for a dozen and so uh, that's some of the things that we're going to discuss there as far as exercise and play and then lastly we're going to talk about hygiene right so uh, number one I would just say the couple of areas there obviously are the coat right and then the teeth and the skin. So the coat, obviously, there's a ton of shampoos out there you can use, and uh, they have all different types of claims and, and, and things that they take into consideration. Uh, you have at it, you know, you gotta just uh, figure it out for yourself there. And along with the, uh, with the coat, you, for a German Shepherd, you want what's called an undercoat rake. A German Shepherd has two coats, as some other of the uh, breeds do. And this undercoat rake is the way to go, but your dog may just require a regular comb or a brush. And again, I don't have to tell you that these stores are in no shortage of these types of things that, that you may want to get for your puppy and for your dog. And another thing I would say with regards to hygiene has to do with a baby shot. Keep in mind, uh, you bring a puppy home at eight weeks, nine weeks, ten weeks, they have not gotten their baby shot because they cannot get them until they're about 16 weeks or four months of age. Uh, so you want to uh, remember that, and then you have to get the annual booster. And then in most states, I know Pennsylvania, after the, that first annual booster, then you get their rabies shot every three years. And so there's a whole big thing in the news lately about rabies, uh, which I won't get into. Um, in this video. So, and then the dental thing, well, uh, again, there's a lot of, I'm looking back here on my little, my little uh, table here. Uh, the dental thing, there's all sorts of chews. Of course, you can scrape. Uh, they have little dental tools, just like they have for people. You can get those for your dog, for your puppy, and uh, there's quite a few things on the market to address uh, that as far as your dog's dental hygiene. So uh, these are just a few things I think are helpful to know, to keep, um, keep track of uh, when you bring home a new puppy. And I am going to have a list, by the way, uh, of dangerous foods. So at the bottom of the video, with the other things that I'm going to list there, I'm going to put a list of foods that you do not want your puppy to have. 
Uh, there's quite a few of them, and uh, so maybe 20, as many as 20 things you just want to keep away from your puppy or your adult dog. They can be deadly and uh, dangerous at least. And so I think that covers everything I want to cover in this video, uh, just being prepared when you bring home your new puppy, and I hope it's uh, helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, certainly let me know. Um, I like to uh, get them all the time and answer them if I can, and I think in this area there may be a, a lot of questions. Hopefully I addressed many of those questions in, in the video here. And so, until next time, thank you for subscribing. If you have not, please do. Uh, just hit that little subscribe button at the bottom uh, of the screen. Uh, like and share. Again, comments and questions. And above all these things, the Lord bless you as you trust Him. Uh, most important, trust the Lord today. Have a great day.